maybe she has a cure. Maybe I can stop working in a quarantine tent that's lined with claymores and C4. You're a humanitarian, and I'm not sure you can afford to be. You have a better option on the table? Because we're barely containing this. And I hope you have a solution that doesn't involve a nuclear response. I heard the talk. Okay. Let's try it your way. Let's extract Dr. McIntosh and pray to God she's got answers we can use. Merci. Yo, what is going on people and we finally know what is up with Operation Outbreak. We have gameplay and we were given a whole bunch of details in the live stream. So if you missed that, then I got you covered with all the details and everything that you would have missed. So Operation Outbreak is a four week event coming to Rainbow Six Siege on March the 6th to all platforms. But if you have a PC, then you can play it early on the test servers, uh, February 20th. I think that's next week, Tuesday. So PC players, y'all can get ready for that. So from the gameplay here, a couple things you can see. Yes, there are flashlights that is right on the D-pad. And also we now have kind of these melee executions for these aliens. I don't know, are they aliens or are they zombies? Yeah, I think they're aliens. So you can now perform uh, silent executions. And this is a three player co-op uh, event. And the reason is three players and not five. Basically they said um, they want everyone to be uh, value part of the team so if you had five people yeah you know you can kind of slack off and people can stray far away but since it's only three of you uh, you kind of have to stick together and communicate otherwise well you're gonna fail so there are two difficulty modes there's normal mode where friendly fire is off for the first time ever and you know enemies don't do as much damage to you and they take uh, a lot more damage and then there's pandemic mode which is the much harder difficulty so friendly fire is on, a lot more enemies spawn, uh, they do a lot more damage and they can also take a lot more damage and enemies uh, spawn randomly but I'll get into that next with the different enemy types. Also coming are Ubisoft challenges, uh, this is where you get the charms every week, they're just weekly challenges. So there's going to be a special challenge for pandemic mode and you will get these cool charms, some of them actually glow. So I can't wait to get some of these. And you will also get customization from the Outbreak packs. It's kind of how you get alpha packs at the end of every round or a chance to get an alpha pack. There will be 50 Outbreak packs. And once you get all 50 then you would have got all of the collectibles. So here's the thing, although uh, in the last Outbreak video I did, I read a long list of operators who actually can get customization from the Outbreak packs. Not all of those are playable in Operation Outbreak. So while Thermite is in a lot of the CG trailers and you can unlock um, customizations for him, you can actually play as him during Operation Outbreak. And also we see an uh, outfit here for Fuse as well. So all of these are things you can unlock from the packs. They're, they're full um, headgears and uniforms, weapon skins and charms. So really looking forward to these customizations. So next up are going to be the enemy types that you come across. So these are some different types of enemies that will be in Operation Outbreak. So this first one here is called the Grunt. And they said that this has two different states. It has this unaware mode, so it's just walking around clueless, um, you know, easy to take down. But if you get too close or you keep too much noise or you turn on your flashlight, then it changes to the aware state. And instead of one, just swarms of them are coming at you and they're charging at you. And yeah, they kind of just transform from harmless to just outright charging at you. So these have two states. So there's now um, an even more stealthy element to the game and you can see by this indicator in the bottom left that I noticed it goes from like a question mark when you are undetected into the outbreak um, icon when enemies are aware of your presence and all of them start charging at you. Uh, the second type of enemy type are called breachers so you actually have reinforced walls that you can set up if you have to defend an area so these are basically um, aliens in the form of thermite so yeah these can breach reinforced walls and they just explode onto you and i noticed from watching the gameplay that you can set up barricades and reinforcements like twice as fast now 
you can do it in like one second versus online is like three to four seconds so I assume they did this so you can escape pretty quickly or at least uh, barricade some doors behind you pretty quickly if a bunch of enemies are chasing you down but uh, the third type of enemy is called a router they said this is more of a crowd control type of enemy so what she can do is she can actually grab one of your teammates if they're standing in the area uh, when she does her attack you can see it kind of like up off the ground I'll see if I can find a clip and put it right here and she grabs one of your teammates and they're just stuck still until one of the one of your other teammates does some damage to her that is when she'll let go of the teammate that she has trapped and they also said to be careful because if she has one of your teammates trapped uh, a breacher can actually go and run up to them and just basically explode so that's gonna take down a bunch of their health so yeah the enemies can kind of like stack their attacks on you and lastly if she takes too much damage then she goes into this bloodlust mode where she actually teleports towards you so yeah she is your crowd control enemy and the fourth third I'm not sure I lost count but I think it's the fourth type of enemy this is called the apex and uh, what he does is he basically stays as far away from you as possible and he kind of hits you with these concussion bolts that kind of block your screen and he can also spawn grunts but these are actually a lot stronger than the ones that are actually walking around so yeah he just stays back and spawns stronger enemies and the last type of enemy that they showcased was called the Smasher, which is basically this uh, giant monster right here. So, yeah, they said it's kind of like Montaigne's armor with sledge for two arms. And yeah, he basically takes a huge amount of damage. He can rush through walls. He can actually hit you through walls, as we saw in this clip uh, right here. Uh, these creatures do have a weak spot, but they didn't want to spoil it, so they didn't tell us where. Now in terms for these enemies, uh, they said they're going to have preset events during the missions where if you replay this mission certain times, they're um, always going to spawn one type of enemy. And secondly, they're going to be systemic events where um, they're just going to spawn random enemies. So if you play it once, you might see a router. If you play it again, you might see a smasher. So it's going to spawn random enemies uh, for these systemic events. And lastly are going to be maps. There are three maps, resort, hospital, and junkyard. And they said these maps are a good mix of open areas and close quarter combat. And also the stages for Outbreak are 10 times bigger than um, the actual stages for Siege in terms of PvP. So just for reference, this is House. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was 21 by 35. And then they showed the first part of the hospital demo that they ran. This is the map on the right side. So. And that's only the first part of the hospital that they showed, so there's probably going to be a second and a third part to that stage. So yeah, the maps are pretty big. And that's about the gist of the info that we were given during the Operation Outbreak uh, reveal. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to play this. A few months ago when I heard rumors about um, Rainbow Six Siege could be doing a zombie mode, uh, I really didn't want that. But after seeing it, no, this, this looks pretty cool. I was a big fan of... Uh, what Dying Light, right, that's the name, can't remember, Dying Light, but uh, now we have a zombie mode in Siege with operators that I like and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I can see this being a huge success, and also we get to see attackers and defenders on the same team for once, and how their gadgets can actually interact with each other, so, yeah, once again, I'm pretty excited to play this. Um, the test servers go live for PC on the 20th, patch notes go live on the 19th which is Monday and I'll also be doing a video covering that so make sure you subscribe and stick around but yeah that's gonna be end of this video if you found this helpful you can leave a like and share it around and comment down below what are your thoughts after seeing this revealed are you even more hyped to play it or are you still skeptical and want Siege to stick on the realistic route and be sure to subscribe for more Rainbow Six Siege content thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video